uh, we are now going to go straight into our next speaker, who is uh, Dr. Chavi Narayan, whose name I will say slightly differently every time. Um, <laughs> Chavi Narayan is a recovering neuroscientist. Oh, this should be fun. Um, who did her, uh, who currently works in science communication. She did her undergraduate degree at the University of Delhi in India before moving to the University of Oxford for her master's and then doctorate, followed by a long stint in science publishing. Can you please put your hands together for Dr. Chavi Narayan? Can you please play the first slide? Take it out. No. Push into your bum. Bring those legs right back. Good girl. Thank you so much for stopping. <laughs> uh, can, we, can I have the next slide, please? So giving birth is really, really hard. Um, that's the percentage of women who have urinary incontinence after giving birth. That's the proportion of women who have some kind of perineal trauma after giving birth. And for non-specialists in the audience, what that means is that they have some kind of injury to their genitals. Uh, so humans are almost uniquely bad at giving birth. Um, and there are two competing explanations for why this is so. So the first explanation is that this is essentially a side effect. It's a side effect of a bipedal posture, um, of having a large brain, and these have other sorts of evolutionary payoffs. But the other competing explanation, which is available um, to most people in the West, is that it is actually punishment. <laughs> <laughs> actually punishment from a vengeful god who really, really hates women. <laughs> um, and uh, if maternity care is not good and things are really not going well, this explanation is actually the more convincing one. Uh, so my hypothesis is that bad maternity care directly predisposes belief in a vengeful creator god. <laughs> Um, and the ideal testing ground for this hypothesis is the United States of America. <laughs> so the United States of America has a wide variation in the quality of maternity care provided. Um, it also has wide variation in creationist beliefs. And these two things are almost perfectly correlated. <laughs> um, and once you sort of understand this fundamental mediating factor which is at play, there are all sorts of things which otherwise don't make sense, which suddenly start to make sense. Um, so for example, in the United States of America, more women than men are creationists. Now this makes no sense at all because women are generally far more rational than men. <laughs> So they're more likely to follow evidence-based healthy eating advice. They're better drivers. Um, <laughs> far um, more men than women are likely to believe that the Earth is secretly ruled by a race of shape-shifting reptilian aliens. Um, and every year, far more men than women are kidnapped by aliens. Um, so this increased belief in creationism by women makes absolutely no sense unless you consider the mediating factor of poor maternal care. Um, and in the UK as well, as soon as the NHS is introduced, there's this real leveling in the number of religious organizations. And once the sort of fundamental level of maternity care that is provided by the NHS really starts to bed in, you see this real increase in the number of secular organizations. Um, so the US and the UK uh, formed this really pair of contrasting studies of belief in the vengeful patriarchal god versus positive maternal experience. Uh, but in case you feel sort of very proud of yourself, um, it is not the case that the, that the UK is a sort of uh, best case scenario. So Finland, for example, um, has nearly half the number of maternal deaths um, that the UK does. Um, and what's interesting is that Finland um, is experiencing a, a sort of neo-pagan revival. 
Um, so they're really kind of moving away from Christianity into some really ancient matriarchal um, goddesses. Uh, so Finland's uh, uh, pattern of data is so aberrant that it actually doesn't fit into this graph. Um, and when you consider Finland, you realize that uh, belief in the vengeful patriarchal god can actually have a negative axis. <laughs> And, and that's, that's the only way you can make sense of this data. So we would advise caution in sort of further efforts to improve maternity care uh, in the UK because this might have wide-reaching um, social implications. It might result in the abolishment of uh, you know, the Church of England, uh, a state religion having bishops in the House of Lords, um, and it might res it result in um, the return of some really, really, really old uh, British deities. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I will stop there, and I'm very happy to take questions. Thank you very much. Really interesting talk, and I'm convinced by the data. Um, also, have you looked into the fact, and I think this is true, that many um, discoverers of dinosaur fossils suffer really badly later in life from arthritis. And could this be in any way connected with the said vengeful god? <laughs> Thank you so much for that question. That is an avenue which we had not previously considered, I have to admit. <laughs> Uh, but yes, uh, it kind of the belief in eventual creator God uh, seems to have kind of far-reaching um, implications uh, for all sorts of things. And maternal care might be just one of the factors that it's mediating, but possibly arthritis and dinosaur fossils. Um, we certainly look into funding for that. <laughs> so your data speaks for itself. Um, Absolutely. But I'm just wondering if uh, there might be more sort of practical uh, applications to this. So naturally, uh, funding the NHS is, is always has, has growing stuff. So would there be a cost benefit um, to perhaps abolishing the Church of England as a cheaper way <laughs> of improving maternal care than just pumping money into the NHS? I see exactly where you're going. But I think in this case, there's been a sort of fundamental misunderstanding of our hypothesis. So the arrow of causation is the other way. <laughs> so if NHS care gets even better than it is now, the Church of England will be abolished. So it's, it's not a two-way relationship, then? It's, uh, it's simply one. It, 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 it's, it's worth testing. It's worth throwing some money at the NHS. <laughs> I, I would certainly suggest throwing some money at the NHS and seeing what happens. But perhaps just abolishing a small sect, just to see what the effect is. <laughs> it could be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, I have no questions. This, uh, this, this fits really neatly into my worldview, so I'm just going to accept it. <laughs> It's not often I'm speechless. <laughs> I, I, I do have to admit, seeing Sheila in the gig in her full glory, which this is not the full glory, uh, often has that effect on people. So Zach insisted that I put that little black bar there. I, I would urge people to see this, you know, the uncensored version. But I'm desperately trying to think of a reasonable question to ask. Um, what kind of level of money are we talking about? Ah, so so uh, one of the problems with this hypothesis is that it is entirely correlational in nature. So that, that is one of its weaknesses. And the ideal thing would be to actually do a causational test in somewhere like the US. So for example, you take two states, uh, something like Arkansas or Alabama, um, which have similar levels of kind of uh, maternal outcomes, similar levels of creationist belief, and basically recreate the NHS in one of them but not the other, <laughs> and see what happens. And uh, this is an expensive exercise, and it may be that there is a null result, there is no difference in levels of creationist belief. And what may happen is that a whole lot of women will have less urinary incontinence and less injury to their genitals for no good reason at all. Um, <laughs> But 
but, but we do think that is a risk worth taking. Um. Do you know, I actually do have one question. Um, yes. With the state of the current government over in the US, are you at all concerned that findings like this could cause them to deliberately try to keep maternal deaths high? Uh. <laughs> We're running pretty low on time. Oh. Uh. But, but, but just very quickly, yes. And I think the current US government has a deep appreciation for this hypothesis and is making practical use of it, exactly as you point out. Shall we go right in?